Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Journey Podcast, and thank you guys for tuning in for another episode. I'm really excited about this one. And as you tune in each and every week, the conversations here, hopefully, they inspire you as you become. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, hopefully the things set here are going to push you forward in some type of way. But I'm really excited about my guest today. Um, got my best friend, the wifey on here. And look, if you, some, some people might tune out. Seriously, I feel like it's going to be something for everybody in this episode. It kind of just going to, yeah, it's going to let it, going to let it happen. But I'm really excited about it. And it's kind of funny because I, I had two scheduled uh, people before just because of the way we we're trying to work it out. And it didn't work out. I think it was very fitting for the first guest of the Journey podcast to be the wifey Mackenzie Rencher. What's up? It's meant to be. Hello. I know. Look, look, here we are. Here we are. Here we it are. It doesn't feel like we're in our house. Um, this is, this is Darian's office. Yeah. And it like, it just can really transform. Shout out to Mackenzie. This is, this is all like kind of my vision, but she put together, made it look cool and cute. That's what wives do guys. Look, if you first thing <laughs> off the, the rip, um, shout out to women. They really do make a house a home. Cause if well, it was, men if, can if, do that too. if it was up to me, well, Darian specifically does not, Darian would sleep on the carpet. So I know I had to get our house together because anytime I'd be like, okay, babe, like we need to buy a couch. He's like, we don't need a couch. I'm like, yeah, we do need a couch. But he just doesn't care about stuff like the things that. Things I like quality stuff. But then once stuff, it comes together. Right, 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 right. He wants to post pictures I'm not of opposed it. to like spending money, but sometimes I'm so reluctant. Do we really need this? And when it comes together, I'm like, you know what? It was worth it. My thing is my home is my safe place. Right. And so I'm like, we just need to like get it together. Yeah. And then once it's together, we'll feel safe and we'll feel comfortable. We'll, we'll want people to come over. Right. And we also love to host. So exactly, I was sure. like, we, we need to get our home together. And now it's together. And look, I know. Love it. We got a little crib. Um, another thing, when you said that, here's how I knew one of the reasons I knew I wanted to like, all right, this thing is going to be something serious. When I was, when I lived at the Ridge, that was my soft, sophomore year. Sophomore and junior. Yeah, my second, third year in college is I had my sheets from Walmart. Like, I went and bought the cheapest stuff, had my that cheap shower curtain. We probably all, probably all, every guy in college had that same generic pattern from Walmart. You yes. got for like however much it was. The, the bed sheets, the, uh, I'm the, uh, the pillow sheets. And then I had that generic like uh, shower, shower. And com your comforter was as thin as paper. Yeah. But I was just like, bro, I am like rather spend money. I'm going to sleep here and it's going to be whatever. But she came and redid my whole entire room. And I was like so thankful. I didn't even really have money like that. Like, what was I? Why was I spending my money on you like that? I don't know. I was in love. But I, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, let's get into it. So, where we are in life right now? Uh, we just had a baby. We did just have a baby. Yeah, you had a baby. She, I had a baby, but we did it together. We did. She's twelve days old now. Crazy. She's upstairs with Grammy. I know. She, she might make an appearance if she is. She, she will gets make hungry. a little cameo here in a second. We'll, mm. we'll bring her down here. Um, that's another thing. Shout out to the grandmas. Anybody out there? For real. Look, if you don't have, they say it takes a village to raise a kid. And, for real. And I am, we are a couple days into being parents, and I swear that's the case. Like, so shout out to everybody that's helping people with these kids, because Lord knows it's a blessing. But it, it is. is like it is like it gets hard sometimes, tiring, emotionally draining. But it's like the most beautiful thing ever. At the same time, I just have such an appreciation for moms now mm -hmm. because you only have especially with a newborn, a certain amount of time in the day that you get to do things and you have to choose like, am I going to shower? Am I going to eat? Am I going to get ready? Am I going to work? Am I going to clean? Like you have to decide within those like tiny little periods of what you're going to do. And all right, let me tell you, our house is not the cleanest it's ever been, but everyone's fed. Hey, we're doing all right. Um, I, I take a nap when I can, but it's, it's tiring, but it's also like a beautiful thing and she's beautiful. She's yeah. healthy and it's great. I have a deep appreciation a too. Like, uh, I think throughout this whole process, just seeing you go through that, my appreciation for women is at an all time high right now. Just because, look, if you don't know, you think you know until you really, you really in there. Mm -hmm. But what women go through to produce a kid is crazy. We had this many humans produce. in the world. Like, there's so much that happens. It's, it's so no, much. No, after goes I gave on. birth, I was like, literally, how did everyone on earth have to do that? Like for everyone to be on earth, a woman had to do this. Right. It seems like such a unique experience, but then you're like, no millions and millions of women millions have to and do millions it. of people have to go through this. And yep. so my appreciation for you right now is like, wow, like mm -hmm. you, 
went through that. You went through like a champ. Like, I mean, I won't get to get too graphic, but you uh, should push for eight minutes, y'all. Like, Darian loves to tell people that. Yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm like innately a competitor. So it's like my girl pushed for eight minutes. How long did your girl push for? Yeah, <laughs> she only pushed for eight minutes. And it was a, here's a couple things. As a guy, I just didn't know, like, really the process of, I always want to say pregnancy, delivery, delivery and labor, delivery and labor. Yes. Um, because you I'm said assu- that backwards, but. Yeah, la- labor and labor delivery. Labor and delivery. Yeah. I assume that once you start having contractions, the baby's about to come out. Start having contractions, and it's like you got hours, days, sometimes until you really get to the point where you can go to the hospital. Because mm-hmm. then you got to get to the hospital. In order to go to the hospital, you have to meet like a certain cadence of contractions. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to the hospital. I'm thinking like, all right, it's showtime. So she's like, we're going to the hospital. All our bags are packed. The car is ready. The car seat's in there, and we're like, it's showtime. So I think I'm going to the hospital, and my baby's about to come out in the next hour. two hours. Yeah, yeah, like soon. I'm about to see her, and then we get to the hospital. And they're not that they're taking their time, but you can tell, like, we're like, oh, we've never done this before. Right. They're just like chilling. Oh, we'll just go ahead and take a seat. Mackenzie's like leaning on the, uh, the <laughs> railing, like, oh my gosh, like having a contraction. So we, we get there. I was dying when I got to the hospital. Then we, we get checked in. I'm thinking, oh, it's about to happen. Then we get to the actual delivery room, and it was like, yeah, the doctor being like an hour. We're like, an hour? An hour. What? And then we wait, and he comes in. And he's like, he checks uh, her cervix. And he's like, you're like four centimeters dilated. He's like, yeah, we're probably, probably like eight o'clock. And it's two o'clock. I'm like, what am I about to do for the next six hours? So she's like, go get my sleep mask. So I'll get her, go, go get her sleep mask. And then I started watching Netflix and her mom brought me some food. It was so nice to sleep. And then she, it really felt like she came fast though. Like, I know not for you because right. you were like watching documentaries and stuff. But for me, I was sleeping I was just enjoying getting sleep because I didn't sleep for two days because I was yeah. contracting for two days. So I know, but then once it was time, once they kind of was like, "All right, Darren, turn off your uh, your laptop. It's time to start doing your thing." And I was the one. I don't know how guys are, but a lot of people told me horror stories. Like people sh- are. Pr- I have to. Be- I'm not saying it's not real, but people project a lot of fear on the guy. They're like, "Bro, don't pass out. Like you gonna yeah. be able to handle it." I don't know if people do it, like, to be, like, you know how people make fun of marriage to be funny? Like, they're like, oh, well, your laugh is over. Like, oh, God, good luck. And they, like, think it's the funniest thing ever, like, every, like, 50-year-old. it's not that funny, But, like, it's never funny. funny, But I feel like that's kind of the same with, like, delivery. Maybe, but some guys, like, some some people really did pass out. And honestly, I don't want to, everybody's pregnancy experience is unique. So some people probably did have different things that went on. But some far- people have like traumatic birthing experience, right. which I would understand. Right. But as far as like ours was like, I had told myself that I was, I was, I'm, I'm not going to touch anything. I just want to look at you. I don't want to be looking down there and seeing everything. We had a whole plane. I was like, just look at me. Right. And like your, your back can be faced to whatever's going on. Right. And it didn't go like that. Yeah. It didn't go like that. So next thing I know, I'm like, I was, I'm not going to hold a leg. I'm holding a leg. I'm like really in there with the doctors, like cheering her on. Patting her on her head, like, let's do this. And then we start pushing. And y'all, I, the body is amazing. Mm-hmm. That, like. <laughs> Darian, Darian wants to tell this story so badly. Because it's, everyone. it's really crazy. I think it's just educational. It's just like. Darian literally made a TikTok that said, I didn't know that a woman's body could stretch like that. I didn't. <laughs> Because you think that, like, oh, you, but, like, you, you, can't, ha- like you, ha- you have an idea, but then it's like you start seeing how everything's working. I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Like, I'm in there just, like, fascinated. Like, really real deal. Bet- between pushes, Darian's like, wow. And, like, asking our doctor, like, intimate questions. Yeah. Real deal fascinated. So then we're pushing, and then anybody who's had a kid, the be- the baby's head is super malleable. So it means it's, like, very soft. And so when you're seeing it come out, you're like, it's coming out in, like, different shapes. It's not coming out as like a, a real head. It didn't look like a head whenever it first came out. Like it's just like, like the edge. Yeah, it's like. And Darian was scared. I see hair and I see like a part of the head, but I'm not seeing like a really formed head. And so the doctor looked at me. He was like, "Are you okay?" I was like, "I'm really doing fine. But I'm just gonna trust that this thing is gonna come out. That okay. her head's gonna be fine." Yeah. And then he was like, "Just trust it. She's gonna come out. It's all gonna fall into shape." And I, it came out. And then it fell into shape. <laughs> and then next thing I know, I didn't really know. I wasn't trying to have premeditated emotions. I was trying to just really take the moment as it came. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be serious or crying. And when, when the baby came out, you start hearing the crying noises. I was just like, I was like very serious. 
I was crying. I was laughing. I have a mm-hmm. video. I'm like crying, laughing at the same time. Cause I'm just so happy. And Darian's like laughing and I like look at him and he has like tears rolling down his eyes. And I'm like, I don't know what you're feeling right now, but I'm oh, sure this, it's euphoric. This process is like just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And all I have to say, I took it like a champ, no passing out. I was in there like. You were, let me tell you something, guys. Darian has been the most natural dad I've ever seen. Like, you would think, Darian has never been around newborns. Like Never, never been the one to babysit. Or no. Nothing. I don't have any nieces Really, or neither one of us. And, but, like, I feel like moms more so just have, like, this instinct. But Darian has 100% had this, like, fatherly instinct come over him the second she came out. Because she came out, and immediately he was, like, holding her. They were taking her, um, her weight and her height or whatever, and, uh, whatever what is that called measurements measurements i cannot think of that word um and he like grabs her from them and they're like okay well we we still have to get her her prints but you know go ahead and take her and darian was just like rocking her in there and like talking to her and it was just like so natural for him like even when we were waking up in the middle of the night at the hospital he was like taking care of her and making her stop crying. I learned how to and swaddle. I'm the swaddle he king. Was, he is the swaddle king. So it's been sweet to watch that too. Just like Darian has been such a natural and it's been beautiful. And now we have a kid and we're parents. Yeah, we say we want three kids. Uh, we're one, 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 one right now has been great. I, I don't think I'm scared to have any more right now. But we obviously we're a couple of days in, so we'll give y'all an update in a couple months. Yeah, we'll let y'all know if we if we have any regrets. <laughs> yeah, kidding. no regrets. People uh, keep asking us what we're gonna name or like the names that we liked but didn't use. But I'm like, I can't really say because we'll probably use it for our other. Yeah, let's, kids. let's keep, keep those in the vault. Yeah, um, I do want to talk about talk talk about your. We can talk about this. What were your feelings about just being a mom in general? Well, I always wanted to be a mom. Like I feel like I always told you that. Mm-hmm. Darian's like a huge dreamer. And so he has like all of these dreams and anytime he'd be like, well, what do you want to do? Like, what's your dream? I always would just be like, I just want to be a mom. And I will say we were not expecting to be parents this early. If you guys have been watching our stuff for any amount of time, you know, she was unexpected. She's a honeymoon baby. So whenever I first found out, I was kind of like, I don't want to say disappointed because it makes me sad now that she's here and like, I don't want her to ever hear that but I was just like I don't want to be a mom this early like I, I could have done this at like 25 26 right. I'm only 23 freshly 23 and now though I like think it's the most beautiful thing and I know why literally my whole life I've wanted to be a mom right. and it just has come so natural to me and I literally can't imagine life without her now same so similar thoughts I think whenever I was like processing it because Definitely was not a part of our plan, but people are like, you know, the cliche is wasn't a part of our plan, it was part of his plan. And I, and I definitely do see like that because now when it was when it was happening, like everything up to this point, I feel like everything's happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. And that definitely like <laughs> we had a little, she had a little window to become a baby and she did. And so I was like, yeah, this must be God's plan. Um, and like kind of maturing through this process and in the past year, like everything just seems so right. I can't mm-hmm. imagine it any other way. Like I would probably wouldn't have definitely wouldn't have chosen going forward, but I wouldn't change it at all looking back. Cause now it just feels like so right. I feel like a lot of things in life sometimes it's like you just kinda like God just works it out and it's like, all right, this is meant to be. So I'm excited to be a dad too. I think I, I want to have a little boy, but something about raising a young girl in today's society has always like been on my heart. Just because oh, it's a good this is a good thought. I saw your mom this other day. I was like, um, I just naturally the environments have been I've seen a lot of I want to say like weak women but just a lot of like insecure women mm-hmm. and a lot of that stems from like dad issues and I want to be like a really good dad for my little girl so she can be like confident and strong not that she won't struggle in life but she hopefully she'll be able to know her identity and know her worth mm-hmm. as she goes through life because for a lot of guys, your insecurities as a man gets praised in this like lifetime. Like think about growing up and all I heard growing up is like your worth is attached to which is an insecurity, your worth is attached to how many women you get. Mm-hmm. What you can do with a woman, uh, how many you can get, how many how many numbers you can get. But as a woman, you get demeaned for the same insecurity of like trying to find your worth in other people. Like yeah. women get so you with a lot of guys or you're like yeah. you know what I'm saying, she's a blank. 
And so it's just, for me, I really feel like that challenge and responsibility to raise like a strong, beautiful, like confident young woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. I know. Let's do it. I know. Let's do it. <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about love story. Okay. You want to go first? Let me go first. You can go There's first different POVs for sure. For sure. You can go first because I want right. to correct you. Okay. All right. So this is how I remember it. <laughs> uh, I remember here's where I was in life. Let's talk about that too. Here's where I was in life. I was my freshman high school. Man, not fr- I said freshman high school. I didn't know you freshman high school. No. Um, Although we, I knew you. Yeah, you did. We'll, we'll talk about that. But I had grew up super duper early. Like, this guy exposed to a lot at a young age, and I had a, I had a really traumatic experience in high school. I got in trouble in high school. I remember just, like, I had just met the Lord my freshman high school, got in trouble in school doing something I wasn't was supposed to be doing, and it really just scared me. To, <laughs> like, scared me straight, though, in a good way, because I was, like, I was fond of God, but then that happened. I was, like, you know, let me get right, because this is just a little warning sign that if you keep going on this path, it's going to be not destruction gra- destruction <laughs> and so i made this pact it's crazy to think about now i had said um after it happened i was like the next girl i kiss is gonna be the next girl i date and i had so much i mean i know guys i had big commitment issues probably stemming oh from, boy did he yeah i had big commitment issues i could like we would be together if i was with a girl but i could never make it like official title because then that was like too much responsibility yeah like i just couldn't do that like we, we we go together but we and everybody knows we go together. everybody knows we go together but i just can't say you're my girlfriend so i had a couple of those in high school i can't believe they let you do that That's i mean you're cute thank you um but so then we get to we get to college and i had a couple girls i was kind of eyeing and i had this prayer i would pray y'all y'all still this prayer i swear it's, it's, it works i used to pray this prayer to god i used to say lord make it hot or cold and every time i prayed that prayer it would go cold i'm talking about like i'm just like lose all interest don't want to text this person like it's over it's wraps and it was just like i was cool with it until i met her she was the first girl i prayed that prayer for and like the, the feelings just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and so it was the summer after my freshman year we had mutual friends and stuff like that and i just started inviting myself everywhere she was and i was just like bro i'm just trying to see what she's about and I just kept putting my finger on it, but I was like, I like being around her. And I started venting to her about girls I was going like trying to figure out. And she would give me advice. And I remember she told me one time, um, oh, this is what it's Father's Day, mm-hmm. 2017. So for some reason, we're going to church. And all her girlfriends told her to go, told I think told her to go to the wrong place. And it was all the guys in my friend group. And we all went to brunch with my dad it was like 14 guys of her mm-hmm. and I she just only girl. yeah only girl and she just was kicking it and i thought that was like I was, that's so dope and i'm telling her about this other girl and she was like darian she was i at the time she definitely hit hitting on me but she's like darian don't you ever settle i was not and the no. music the music starts playing shut up i also at that point had already given up on the fact that like we were ever gonna be a thing not that i was like ever holding on to hope but i was just like it that had like long past yeah. because we were already such good friends that i was just like whatever and i kind of liked a boy at the time right and then this is funny so that same day she tells me that and then uh we're in this meeting and one of our mentors kind of like basically like weirdly prophesied he's like if i wanted mackenzie and darren to be dating they could be doing that but right now god's working on them and i was just like which i don't even remember i don't even remember that but i was darren does. yeah i was like okay so that's in the back of my mind and then this dude that we grew up with uh told Mackenzie because Mackenzie has a big personality he was like you too intimidating for the guys that's why nobody likes you and it like crushed her and I just felt in my heart not knowing it would be me at the time but low-key kind of feeling I was like some guy's gonna appreciate that one day he did tell me that, that yeah play the music, the music, then, music starts playing again that is drama I know and then that was kind of it and then we went to this kind of turning point uh then we went to this summer camp that we grew up the church we grew up going to had a big summer camp we we're both like volunteers now mm-hmm. and we went to this summer camp and I remember just like, dang, like the feelings just kept growing. Then everybody there is kind of like a thing where you got your like your gauntlet crush, which is the, 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 like, the summer camp. The summer camp It's like you got your summer camp crush. And so people around started getting word. So people kept talking about every time. Like, Have y'all seen each other? Have you seen her? Have you seen her? Yeah. And then I was praying that prayer 
It got hotter and I'm hotter. I'm getting butterflies. I know. It, it's coming back. So, so then we get back from the camp, and I'm about to go into, like, football camp, and I got, like, a week. And one of, and I knew, like, if I don't make a move before camp, like, anybody knows football, like it's, like, basically hell week. Like, you got two weeks of just, like, it's all football all day. I'm not thinking about nothing but football. And I know if I don't make a move before this, I'm not going to make a move. And one of my mentors was, like, I was at breakfast with him. It was on a Saturday. And he was, like, how are you, Mackenzie? I was, like, man, I think she's cute and all. Like, I just don't know if I should make a move or not. He was like, you won't drive down to Columbia right now and take her on a date? And this, like, granted, this is two hours away from where I'm at. And I was like, I bet you I will. So I drive down, I call her. And she's like, I was like, are you busy today? And knowing now, she was, had a whole day planned. I, I was so busy that day. Yeah, I had a whole day planned. And she was like, no, I'm free. I was like, I'm going to come take you on a date. And she's like, okay. And then I was going to be free that day, I'll tell you right. that. Right, and then we went on our first date, and then the rest is kind of like, we got a couple more moments in we'll get to, but that's kind of it. Any, any moments you want to fill in? No, I have no revisions to that. That was pretty accurate. That was pretty sometimes accurate. You stretch. Sometimes I, you stretch. It. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I, sometimes I boost, but that was that was pretty. Yeah, no, that's pretty accurate. I would love to touch on your commitment issues. Mm, mm, we can definitely get into that. I think, um, <laughs> <laughs> look, kids is the first girl to ever give me, give me an ultimatum. It's true. First girl to ever give me ultimatum. The top of a parking garage. It was so. This is what it was. We had so basically talked all summer, kind of like flirted, play games, took her on a date, and I was just cool with it staying there. That's kind of what I've always done, <laughs> you know. I was like, I was just cool with it just staying, like, like we together. Darian just thought that. Here's the thing. Darian thought that he could call me like once every three days. We're not there yet. Okay. Go Here's ahead. where I am. I'm saying is where I was. I was like, she came, she would come to the Clemson games. She would come to my games. She was, we had a mutual friends. We'd all be hanging out, and I was just cool to keep it like that. I got the the feeling was definitely growing. So then I went on a date one day. And I'm thinking everything's going smooth, and I just catch like a mean stray. Like the energy just shifts, and uh, we were on the top of a parking garage, like trying to be like cute and do like I don't know something a little date, and she's like, I think we're. We like two and a half months in like serious talking phase. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I think if you make me a girlfriend or we should just stop. And I was just like, she's like, so yeah, you got a decision to make. Like I said something like I was like, I didn't ask to be like put on your plate. I was like, I know you have a lot on your plate, but I did not mm-hmm. ask to be put on your plate. Say that again. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> that was a part of, I was like, that, that, that is what you said. Cause I know it hit me crazy. I'm a big quote guy. So she said that, I, I and I was like, I was like, dang. Yeah, I said, I know you have a lot on your plate, but I did not ask to be put on your plate. And so either make me a priority and make me your girlfriend or don't, which is either way is fine. But you did say that. I wasn't going to beg. You did say that. And then next and thing he I, said, oh, I, yeah, I was like, oh, OK, so <laughs> I, I drop her back off and I'm like, I go home and think about it. And the thing was, I wasn't as sure that I wanted to do it. I was just sure I didn't want to lose you. And that's where you, that's where a commitment has, that's where it really came in. I was like, Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to do this, but I don't want to lose what we got going on. So then uh, after one of the games, we had one and I asked you to be my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And then we kissed. Mm -hmm. And September 23rd, 2017. And then since then. We waited a long time to kiss. We did. I was on that super like legalistic religious thing where like i'm like not kissing a girl yeah some of that was good some no some, i think it some was of that was for formative us. some of that was like good for my, for my heart some of it was just kind of od where i'm looking back i'm like bro you were just weird yeah i mean i think waiting two and a half months was like a little much but like i was down for the ride right and so yeah. i i there was multiple times i thought you're gonna kiss me and then he never did i thought about it but i was just like uh you stuck to your word of the no kissing until yeah you're dating how was uh let's let's go through let's go through the dating phase. Um dating was interesting. Cause one, like you're dating anybody and you like you're just learning and growing up together. We were, I was nineteen, you were seventeen at the time. Mm-hmm. In college, I was playing sports. Um I was a terrible communicator. Yeah, and let me go back to what <laughs> I was saying. Um Darian thought that he could talk to me like every other day, or sometimes he would go like two days and then He'd be on the phone so happy, like, how are you? And I'm like, I don't, like, we're not good. She's like, I don't even know you. Yeah, I was like, I literally don't even know you. Like, we haven't talked in two days. Like, who are you? Right. 
And so I had to tell him about himself because he did not know how to communicate. It was bad. I treated like the homies. He really did. <laughs> he was real. like, he's like, I guess for me, I'm just like, well, if we talk every few days, I mean, I feel caught up and I feel like we're like, I mean, like we like talk, like we like DM sometimes. I'm like, literally, what do you think this is? Like we are in a adult relationship, right. but he just didn't know guys. He did not know. And so, you know, sometimes I get DMs of girls asking me for advice because we have talked about this right. on my YouTube before. And I'm like, I never really know what to say because I feel like with you, it was like the heart was there. You it know? definitely was. The heart was there and you had good intentions but you just needed to be taught and then sometimes when i get these dms it sounds like these men don't have good intentions and they they really can't be taught they're just not good guys so i'm like i can't i can't really be giving y'all advice because it really is like you were an amazing man and i knew i saw the potential and i was like no he he is amazing he just needs help yeah let's uh that's a good point let's let's stop right there just for a second potential a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people get on that. They like, they they'll they'll be stuck on potential for, they be engaged for ten years, mm. or be dating for ten years on potential. On potential, they be like, oh, this person's got potential, and they be getting dogged out. You know. Yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah, I think I think it's a, it's a definitely a fine line with potential. I think potential. I see a potential as vision, more so than I just see potential as just like this waiting and waiting waiting it's also like, i will say when you're like f following jesus you will get discernment on like for sure on people because for sure with you i knew like you love the lord i love the lord and i prayed a lot of like god like is this good or is it not good because yeah. like if it's not good and darian actually just doesn't have good intentions or he's like actually just like doesn't care about me like i can trust that god would let me know that right but every time like i, I prayed about it i feel like it was like a lot of patience was needed. Yeah. So if you do follow Jesus, you can like trust that God would let you know. For sure. He's, he's not playing games with you. Like if, if he's really not a good guy, like you can ask God and God will let you know, but you can't be holding out for potential. Nah, you can't as, um, learn this in sports. I mean, it's, it supplies relationships. That potential has got to turn into performance at some point. You know, it's got to it's got to shift where it's like, good point. All right, you you changing into who you want to be. Like it's gonna take some time. That's the thing about dating, especially when you're young. Like you kind of, I always say we, we grew up together, really did. Because mm -hmm. there were some things I definitely needed to be taught. Like I just like just wasn't good at it. Yeah, and we've talked about taking breaks before too, because we did have to take a few breaks. Yeah, and I've gotten multiple comments of people saying that the reason why we took breaks was because. He cheated on me, and I just want to clear the rumors up. I've never been cheated on, Thanks. okay? And I would not stay if he did. Not now, not ever. Um, so let me clear that up because um, I've never publicly said that. But people just assume that, that when you I, take a break, it means... Well, for mo for some people out there, that is like... The only reason they would, they would take Not breaks. the only reason, but I'm saying it is a reason because some people... Let's, let's talk about that because I think we did take breaks, and we had like people in our lives, like whenever we took a break, I think sometimes in society, like common common breaks in society, or be, people take a break, and it's their excuse to go cheat. You know, like they oh, they, right. they take a break, and it's like I get a free pass to go do whatever I want. Like that's what breaks mean, yeah. Yeah, I feel like when we took our breaks, and we had saw saw people older than us take breaks that we like looked up to, it was more so this ain't going right. We're both young, trying to figure this thing out. Instead of just like continue to run into a dead end right here, let's just take a break, regroup, and let's meet back up. I and a lot of times, like. Well, every time we had the intention of getting back together, but we just needed time to like pray through it and also just and like find ourselves. Yeah. And find ourselves and just be like, is this actually what we want? Because we're two years into this thing or we're a year into yeah. this thing or whatever. And it's like, we're, we're grown now. Like we're not just out here just hanging out for fun. Like we're dating to eventually hopefully right. be married. And so we were not out here wasting time. So there were multiple times on my end, on his end. Like, not like a ton, like four. I think, yeah, I think it was like four. And, and part of it, too, was with breaks, I think. It's like you're not obligated. Until we got married, I'm not, we're not, neither one of us owe each, owe each other anything, mm -hmm. you know? And to, to the point where, like, we want to be, do what's best for ourselves. And sometimes it's like, this wasn't good for either one of us to be going through the headaches right now. And it was like, all right, let's take a break and really ask God, like, is this relationship what it's supposed to be? What do I need to change about myself? And let's come back and take another swing at it. A lot of times it was communication problems too. Right. 
So Cause we did long distance. That's a, that's what we even talk about, but like we did long distance for two and a half years of our relationship and more than that. That was two and a half. That was three and a half. Three and a half. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we did long distance for three and a half years mm-hmm. of our of our relationship, and it's hard. It is hard. There's different. There's different. It's pros and cons to dating up close and to dating with long distance. I think dating long distance, the the problem is like. It's never the in person. Like if you, if you like somebody, in person is always gonna be great. Mm-hmm. It's the spaces in between, like phone calls, Facetimes, and it's cute for like the first couple of months. But it's mm-hmm. like, all right, bro. Like we just, it's so much. And, and then you, you get busy and you can't see each other. And then it's like right. you and I are both such like we like to see each other in person, right. and that's where we would like connect. Yeah, connect. And then you have a good moment, and you're like, all right, I gotta go drive two hours home. And I won't see you for two weeks, three weeks. Right, and it's like, like all right, he bro. also was a student athlete, so it was like. He had no margin and I had margin. Right. And so a lot of times it was like me going to him or like, and then I would get busy and then he could never come to me. And so. But then whenever you moved up here to the upstate, it's like a whole different pros and cons. Cause then it's like, all right, bro, get a life. Not you in particular, but, but I'm saying like, Sorry. but it's like both of us, like, I don't want to see you every day. Now. Yeah, yeah. Like let's you. Like that's go, also not healthy. Yeah. Like, go get you some married. friends. I'm going to go get my friends. But let's like get on a frequent schedule of seeing each other because it is better to be able just to pull up on each other, come to each other's house, go go have do something dinner casually, go do something fun together. But then it's also like, bro, we you have to have a, a life outside of your relationship for sure, for sure. Um, but then we look, we we made it though. We did. We made it. We made it Married. through. Yeah, I think through. What was the hardest part you think through college? Even though you didn't go to college, I don't know if people. <laughs> yeah, you, you basically college. had a college lifestyle. Because I was in college for so long. So you you got you got the The people that know like the housewives version of me, which feels like the ghost of Christmas past, um, think that I went to college. I know everybody thinks you went to Clemson. You did not go to Clemson. She did was just not. at Clemson while I was. She was just a Clemson Clemson. groupie. Right. You was just around <laughs> you was around for for a good time and we had a we had a great time. Yeah. Um, what was the hardest? I would say just with us in general. Maybe like just during that time as a young woman, like coming up, like what do you think was like, what mm-hmm. was like really big for your character or who you wanted to be during that time? Uh, I would say just knowing who I am in general, because looking back, I thought that I knew who I was, but I went through a lot of eras and some I'm not so proud of. Um, I think at, at one point I thought that I was like, the ish i don't know how to say that without saying a curse word but like i was like kind of prideful and like i look back and i'm like ew that's just like not who i not who i am um but yeah i would just say like knowing who i am which i personally believe that you can't really do that without having a relationship with the lord but yeah i was just i think i was just insecure but i didn't know because i'm i am such like a confident person yeah and my personality is so big that you wouldn't know that I was insecure. And I, I didn't know I was insecure because I can mask it really well because I do have a big personality. Right. Um, but yeah, I would just say like, yeah, insecurity, knowing who I am and being the same person all the time. Mm. Because like I, I would like mold myself to different versions of myself depending on who I was around. And I look back and I'm like, not, not proud of that i want to be the same person all the time so i'd say probably that and then like with us i would say just like communication yeah i look back and i think college is such like a well that young adult like 18 to 24 range that like i just kind of got out of is such a pivotal time for people because like you grow up with your parents and you like you say you think you know who you are and then you get out into the world and everything you believe is tested Mm mm-hmm and it's, it's really good. I mean, it's good that it's tested because it either makes you either stand on what you believe. And some of, some of the things are like some of the things you were raised, that sh- it is good that you get into an environment where those things are tested and mm-hmm. you stand on them because it's like, all right, that was good. It's also some things in that in that time period where you get out and you start experiencing life. And it's like maybe what I was doing growing up probably isn't the best way. And it's a good moment to really change. Yeah. But I feel like that that time period, I feel like it sets the trajectory of your whole life. Like, I feel like that, like, whether you go to college or not, I feel like that moment. Most of the time, yeah. When you leave high school, it's like, 
it really is make or break. Like, who you going to be? Because mm-hmm. I've, I mean, I've seen a lot of people just, like, either make themselves in that time or it's a time where, like, it just starts going downhill real, real quick. And so... I can hear... I can hear our daughter crying I know, upstairs. She's she might need to be fed soon. Um, she's hungry. Yeah, I think I think that time I was gonna say something else about college. Um, for me, I just think it was, I think everything like the whole identity, I, your identity drives your activity because it's like when, just find out who you are. Yeah. I think the to me the most confident people to be around are the people who know they are the most peaceful people to be around are people who know they are. And I think for sure. And during that time, it's a great time. Every, it's always a great time, but definitely during that stage is a great time to really double down on who you want to be mm-hmm. because everybody's like, everybody's figuring out whether they want to, they, people sh- manifest in different ways, but everybody's trying to figure out like, who do I want to be? And during that time, figure it out. And yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I want to get into really just, I think one of the things I'm proud of you the most was like seeing your hustle, your entrepreneurial spirit. And there's a lot of people like guys and girls who want to be creators. I remember you uh, like started to get into like content creation and you want to do your first YouTube. And I was like, oh, you got to give it three months. Mm-hmm. And uh, you was like, okay. So you, you bought, you didn't buy a camera. You're doing your phone. But you bought, you bought a computer. I bought my phone. I bought, yeah, I did. I bought, I bought my computer. Yeah. You bought your computer. Which is a big deal for me at that time. I know. And you were like, because you were working, uh, working for your mom. Mm-hmm. Not that nothing was wrong with that, but you was like, I just don't, I just hate doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you was like, I really want to try something else. And um, you got into it. I remember after like a month, he was like, I want to quit. I was like, you can't quit. Yeah, he did let me quit, which thank God. Yeah, but then you got you got into it. And I think there's a lot of people out there that want the confidence to go for something. And they just never do it. So mm-hmm. how was that for you? Honestly, it was hard at first. It was actually one of my friend's katie that told me that i would be a good youtuber she's like i would watch your videos and i was like really and people just always wanted to see behind the scenes of being like a a college athlete girlfriend and i mean not that i didn't think it was interesting but i was just like okay like i don't know why people are so interested in this um and so i think having that content of like football kind of helped me jump into it so i would say just like finding a niche and like sticking to it and i mean it doesn't even have to be anything crazy but like just having something that kind of like makes you stand out and for me that would just happen to be like football and i would do vlogs and just kind of worked out that way but i will say it was a journey for sure journey um because you know it's it's a it's a bold thing to do and you can feel very misunderstood um I won't go too much into that but it just it was kind of hard for my world that I had already created to like be vlogged I don't know if that makes sense but like right. people didn't sign up to be a part of the vlog you know like that just that was my avenue right but I wanted to show my life. So it was kind of hard to navigate, like, wh- how much do I show? How much I don't? Especially because a lot of our friends are, like, well-known people. So it's kind of like, do I want to show them? Do I not? And it was just kind of hard to navigate. And I feel like, luckily, now I have, like, such a balance. And, like, everyone knows, like, that's what I do for work. And yeah. everyone's, like, so supportive. And everyone, like, watches the vlogs now. But, like, at first, it was just, like, it was just hard for me to decide what I wanted to show and what I didn't want to show and honestly I feel like I'm actually going through that again just with having a daughter like how much do I want to show of her and kind of navigating that so in a weird way it's kind of like full circle of having it kind of ebbs and flows it kind of comes back yeah and in some seasons it's easier some some it's not because there's like certain times where it's like we might be going on a trip and it's like okay maybe I don't want to show this because like I want my friends to feel like I'm present or whatever whatever it may be but it's also brought you like on the good side it's brought you a lot of joy i've seen you really come alive yeah and people have really like accepted you for it yeah that's it and looking back at on memories is so yeah. beautiful like it's so dope i have so many trips vlogged now that it's like it's cool. me and my friends will go back and watch them and like it's just fun to look back yeah. and be like look at these memories that we made so i would it's, say it's fun on that note one of the things i admire i think for people is it's not necessarily have to be just that, 
But anytime you step out on something, you're going to be misunderstood a little bit. It's yeah, all, it's all, it's almost like admission for a dream is to be misunderstood. Because when you mm-hmm. step out and do something, whether you start a business, you put yourself out there, people that know you're going to be like, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. They're going to put a label on you because that's what they always known. But it's crazy how people will double back after seeing your success or seeing you stick to it and accept you for it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the worst thing you can do is to start something and quit. Because then I it's agree. like... Which is what I wanted to do. Which I know. Looking back, I'm like, thank God I didn't. But yeah, you have to be okay with being misunderstood for a little while and not but you, quit. Yeah, but you're so at peace with yourself. And that's the thing. When you're chasing a dream yeah. or doing anything you want to do, there's like a peace within yourself that makes you want to go for it. Because you see something more in life where you're like, I want to do this or do that, put myself out there, or create this. But there's also the tension of like, people are, people are going to have opinions no matter mm-hmm. what. One of my favorite quotes, you know, I'm quote, look, look. Sweeney's to get out of my office because I keep seeing Sweeney and I keep thinking of Coach Sweeney's sayings. But one of the things he always said was, um, dogs only bark at moving cars. And it, bro, hey, look, it changed the way I thought about stuff because it's like, people are only going to talk about things that, things that are going on. Yeah. Like, if you don't have anything going on, people are never going to have an opinion. If you want to never, if you never want to do anything worthwhile, you never want you never want anything, anybody say anything bad about you, do nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, if you gonna go for something, people gonna have stuff to say. But yeah. if you push through it, I feel like. Also, I want to like be clear that we've had w- so much support. I know, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, much. Support. Yeah, we we sound. It sounds. I feel like we're sounding dramatic. But it's a but realistic, like, realis- it, realistic, realistic warning for anybody going for something that people are gonna have opinions. Yeah, and you also will get a lot of love. You probably get way more love, but mm-hmm. the opinions is always the ones that eat you up, mm-hmm. though. Don't Criticism. say. Um, all right, I want to move on. I want to talk about. Um, let's talk about special time, special pivotal moment is when we got engaged Mm -hmm. it was like uh, i know people always ask me like bro what is it how'd you know she was the one how'd you know you want to get engaged and we have been dating for talk about commitment issues i feel like that's like the craziest decision you could ever make 100 percent. one you know somebody's i think told us their marriage council like if you can if you cannot get married don't get married Cause it's like, it is, it's the biggest commitment you'll ever make, but the most beautiful thing you ever do. Mm-hmm. And I remember just, we've been dating for like four years at the time. Um, and I remember all the prayers I prayed as a young person, the prayers I prayed even while we were dating. And I just saw who you became as a woman. And I saw who I became in light of you being a big part of my life. So I think it's a big part too, is like, I loved who I was being by being with you. Mm-hmm. And so people, when people ask you, like, how'd you know she was the one? It was is the whole thing of like, I don't think there's one person in the world that like, it's just particularly for you as a human being. Like that would just be, I just don't believe in that. I think there's multiple people you can be attracted to. You can see a life with, but it's like the idea, like whoever I commit to is going to be my one person forever. Mm-hmm. And so when I was thinking about that, I was like, man, I just like everything I wanted in a woman is in you. And then like, I'm attracted to you. I think you're be- she was, you're beautiful. We have a lot of fun together. And our lives, like I always say, just made so much sense. Mm-hmm. That was the thing, too. I just feel like that's, that's a big part. Like you can't, That's like the number one thing we'd always say. It just like made so much sense. It just made so much sense. You really can't put a finger on it, but you just know it deep down in your heart. Like, this just makes so much sense. And for me to walk away from this would just be almost me walk away from myself. Mm-hmm. And so it just got to the point. I saved up a couple racks. <laughs> Shout out to that college stipend, stipend my scholarship. Yeah. And I was like, it's time, so... I remember buying it. I was like, all right, this is for real. I remember taking our moms to the jewelry store. And it's like, all right, this is this is real deal. Bought the ring. And our engagement, she didn't know this, but the time, it went like terrible. Uh, I had planned it uh, for a day. All her, well, one of her best friends got COVID. Some of her family couldn't fly in. Had to cancel the whole thing. Basically tell her, like, you're supposed to get engaged this weekend. And she was like, no, you got COVID too. Yeah. You got COVID. That was that was the number one problem. Yeah, but uh, she got COVID. Your best friend got COVID. Yeah. And so, yeah, whole thing got canceled. But I'm telling y'all, God got a way. He got a plan. Ended up doubling back and ended up being way more beautiful mm-hmm. than anything. Like, it was so great. Our, shout out to, I feel like if you're dating somebody, you got to be cool with the friends. The friends are really what's going cool. they, they They're the ones... That's going to do it for you. I'm they, telling you, mm-hmm. like your, your girlfriends or your wife's friends are the ones you got to be connected to. Cause they, they're the ones that they are going to make through. it happen. I just, I had a vision. I gave them money and they made it happen. 
it I'm was like, so beautiful it was so beautiful so shout out to shout out to the friends of the, the mm-hmm. ladies friends but yeah it was it was beautiful um i remember <laughs> i had like words prepared i think i was pretty smooth but i remember in that moment you just kind of black out and i just start crying i was like a puddle i was like man mm-hmm. all right this is this is legit what do you remember from our engagement I just remember walking in and one, I was really surprised because it was a Tuesday and I definitely thought it was going to be like on a Friday or Saturday because I was like, how are, how are people going to be able to come in and like be here on a Tuesday? Like that's impossible. So I, I, I did not have it in my mind at all. And we were supposed to be meeting up with our friend for a photo shoot, which some people, yeah, some people might think that's bizarre, but like Derry and I did photo shoots all the time. Not really. And it was one of our best friends. Yeah. And it was one of our best friends. So I walked in, I saw like a million roses and I was like, mm-hmm. And I, and I heard our song playing I know. and I was like, oh my God, like now yeah. is the time. Cause it was, I anticipated it so much because we, I mean, I knew it was coming. Uh, we had talked about it. Uh, I can't believe that some people don't talk about getting engaged and then they just like pop up with a ring. That's crazy. That's insane. Like yeah. we definitely had conversations of like, are you, are we, do we really want to do this? Right. So I knew it was coming, um, but I didn't know like the exact day or anything like that or any details. And so, yeah, I walked in and I was like, finally. And honestly, I had a lot of anxiety leading up to my engagement. And I feel like people don't really talk about that because it's supposed to be like such a happy time. Yeah. But I really struggled with, like, if I was supposed to, like, get married or not. Right. And obviously. I think it's a good, like, like, almost, sometimes it's, like, a good warning because it's, like, it shows the the weight and the conviction of, like, this is a serious thing. This isn't nothing to play with. I also want to touch on, I think it's crazy that somebody will propose and not have a conversation. Like, I'm not, when I propose, this ain't me guessing. Like, I'm asking you, but I'm more so telling you, hey, we're about to get married. You know what I'm saying? I'm asking you out of, like, the tradition. But yeah, I'm not yeah. gambling on what you're going to say. It's going to be yes or no. Yeah, like, people would be well, surprised that person. Also, like, don't, like, do that to her. That's so awkward. Like, right. y'all need to have a conversation to make sure you're ready. It's, it, marriage ain't a joke, folks. Right. And we, so, yeah, we definitely had talks, like, of, and we had talks early on, I think, the whole we got the advice i think it's wise that we were dating to marry but it wasn't as pressure through in dating as this has to work out it was like this mm-hmm. is the vision like i definitely could see before we started dating i could see the potential of you being a good wife mm-hmm. and i could see one day like you being somebody good with kids like i saw that but it wasn't that pressure in dating to where like all right we gotta stick with this because of that right and then once we um kind of got towards towards the end it was like probably like a year out was like hey like the next year i think we both were like, we definitely could see it. Mm-hmm. The time and everything when I was in, when I was in school had to work out. So it was just like the timing of it all. But it was like, all right, I think we're in a place to where I feel like we could do forever together. Yeah. And so um, that would give that advice to anybody out there too. Just like definitely talk about it. Have a have a conversation. I want to talk about people putting their negative energy on us. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna tee you up because here, here's here it is. With look look people is. Just because, just because you're miserable, <laughs> you've had miserable experiences, does not mean you should project that on other people. And it doesn't mean it's even like fact. Mm-hmm. Every stage of our lives, like the past probably year and a half, people projected their like misery on us, their fears. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing if you're doing it to like get some a realist expectation of like, all right, this is going to be hard. This is going to be that. But when you get married... All these miserable dudes be like, well, there goes your life. Oh, it's it's man, like what you... I was talking about earlier. Like people people love to like put that on you. And I'm like, I I'm sorry your life sucks. I'm sorry that you hate your marriage. And I'm right. sorry that you put no effort into your marriage. Right. And that you and your wife don't have a good connection. I really am. I genuinely am sorry. Consider counseling. Thanks. But don't put it on me. Yeah, I rebuke that. And then it's also <laughs> when we when we're having a baby, we start announcing. And obviously it wasn't planned, but at the same time. Well, there goes your life, man. You got to throw your whole life away. Hate that that happened to you. Hate that. It's like, bro, just because your life sucks with your kids don't mean that's going to be mine. Like, I I know people got beautiful marriages, got beautiful families, and they having a time of their life. I want to, this is what point I want to say is we talk about this a lot, is the idea of freedom. Like, people think freedom is an absence of commitment. Like, when, when people are young, they think freedom is I can go do whatever I want, whenever I want. But true freedom 
and I learned this in sports, but like you feel the most free when you're the most committed mm -hmm. in every stage of your life. Like I feel way more free in marriage than I ever felt because I'm committed. Mm -hmm. I feel way more free, like well, any responsibility because there's a commitment level there. So I think people even learn like your freedom is tied to your commitment, not the absence of commitment. You know, people always are like, bro, I don't want to be free. I don't want to be tied down to no woman. You're not, you're not free. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You you are free when you're committed. Like I can say you can't be committed when you're single. Yeah. You can be committed to like de developing yourself, but like in any circumstance, you're the most free when you're the most committed to something. Yeah. So I just want to say that. That's all I want to say. But, um, yeah, anything you want to tell it? Yeah, any, we can touch on that a little bit more about it because people do project that a lot. Yeah. People put all like. It just makes me sad because ultimately it's that person is either like not happy with themselves. Right. Or like not content with themselves and don't actually put effort in for like their marriage and mm -hmm. their children and whatever. And they didn't do the hard work to like make it beautiful. Yeah. And so then they want to put it on you. But it's like, mm -hmm. no, I'm going to enjoy my my daughter yeah i'm gonna enjoy like our future children i enjoy my marriage right and like just because you've experienced that does not mean that you can just put it on me i know and it's i never want to like sad. pain like a, it's no perfection is not even reality in no form or fashion even though how much social media can yeah it's hard i don't sleep right yeah, now but like right you don't we post our highlights because it's like i think what social media is yeah but it's like we are, I think there's also like a, a wisdom in like telling people like, yeah, it is hard. Like it's difficult. There's hard moments. We've had hard conversations. We've journeyed through each other. We both got like, we both carried our own baggage into our relationship and our marriage. Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, like on a lifelong journey to just figure that out. And that's why I always say, I think that's the most beautiful thing about relationships is that you really are committed to just figuring it out with somebody. We figured out love together. Like I thought I knew what love meant, but then like us learn how to love each other, love ourselves We've been fig we're figuring out being parents together. Like you just continue to a lifelong journey of just figuring it out. I think also like this is the last thing I'll say about this is people don't know that you can like have beauty and like hardships in the same wave. Shout out to Jermaine Cole as beauty in the struggle. Exactly. Um, but I feel like people are like like right now, like I don't get sleep. Right. I don't really have a lot of me time. Right. I don't like I like have spit up on me. <sighs> like it's just that's just the reality. Like I I'm like in sweats. I just had a baby. OK, I'm I am still bleeding from having a baby. <laughs> but hey, I love her and yeah. I get to look at her and I get to choose like every day. Like I'm going to have joy. I'm going to find joy. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go for a walk. And people don't understand, like, you can, like, have all of the f those first things and still have, like, all of the beauty of having, like, a newborn or, like, our marriage. Like, there has been times, like, you and I have been, like, fighting more than normal. But right. it doesn't mean that, like, our marriage is, like, not good. Right. Like, you can have, like, beauty and hardship in the same way. I, I would even go a step further and say, like, the beauty is in the hard things. Wow. You know, like, I'm serious. Like, I think... If you look at life, write like, that down, hey, whatever we do this podcast for a reason. Hopefully you get something <laughs> from it. But seriously, I think everything I'm like the most proud of in my life, the hardest things I've done are the most beautiful things. 100%. Like even look at like, I mean, look at our like relationship, like literally yeah. everything hard that we went through is like the thing that I love about our relationship now. Right. And even not necessarily going through hard things, but doing hard things like mm -hmm. where that's like start counseling. Uh, we have hard conversations like. We wanted to, like, do it, do it in a God honoring way, like as best as we could. You know, like doing, trying to do hard things is what makes things beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. or like even like our own self disciplines. Like, discipline in itself is like doing something hard because you know there's beauty on the other side. And like mm -hmm. you said, like I think, even for me, my emotions during this whole time of, of like I feel emotionally drained, but it's still the most beautiful time of my life. You know, mm -hmm. like getting to see our little girl, getting to be married. It's it's all been great. Um. Yeah, I don't, I, we even talk about our wedding. We ain't gonna talk too much. I just don't know if like, there's anything. Like, I, I just think I do want to talk about weddings just for a second because it was so iconic. Our wedding was like I love our wedding. I know it was it was literally everything we dreamed about. Uh, everything. I know. There's something special about. Like, I have like a whole wedding series on my TikTok. If you guys want to go, yeah, watch it. go check it out for real. Like it was, we were re really fortunate to uh, to like really have some provision. We we're both able to make some money and had some supportive parents to be able to really have like the dream of our lives 
Uh, and we was like, that's one of the things. I feel like it's a once in a lifetime moment to where we was like, let's ball out. People got opinions about that. And we obviously. I think we did it responsibly. Yeah, we did it responsibly. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, bro, if you. If you I got, just like always dreamed about having like a big, like amazing wedding. And the fact that we, we got to do it was amazing and such I, a such a blessing. I think it was like, it was all the emotions that day. It was like, I remember laughing to have as much joy as I could ever imagine, like with my friends, my best friends. Yeah. And I remember crying, like at the scene you come down the aisle. That's what I want to talk about because um, people, I mean, people always talk about how like girls are, if, if my man ain't crying at the, at the down at the altar, I'm, I'm going back and taking my dress off. And I would just say like my experience was, I just don't know how, I, I can say how you couldn't cry, but I know I just, there was no, I couldn't cry because it's like all your emotions just kind of culminate to that one moment. You start thinking like, it's like a rush of like, it's like the movie. Like you start playing all these events on both sides of the story. You're looking out, seeing all these people who've been a part of your story. And then you're seeing like your wife walk down the aisle, like the most beautiful she's like ever been. And it's like, I'm just like, bro. Do you think I was as beautiful as I've ever been on my wedding day? I thought that dress was was the one. I love that you love my dress so much because obviously dress, that's like the, the dress was the one. She was so nervous. But the dress, that was, that was, I was like. Because you pick out your dress and like, obviously you, like, he's my best friend and I know his style, but like, he's never seen me in a wedding dress before. So I was right. like, I was so nervous for whatever reason that you weren't going to like it. I know, but I love it. But that. I don't think, I, I mean, I felt beautiful on my wedding day, but you really thought I was the I most thought, beautiful I've ever been. Is that picture of, we might pull it up. It might be like right here. That picture of the flower, like, like you in front of like the um, the flower wall. Mm -hmm. I, I love that picture. Yeah. That was like, it was just a beautiful day. I think like people have opinions about weddings. At the end of the day, your weddings are just. I didn't like the way my eyebrows looked. Mm. Yeah. Sorry about that. Tough. Um, I think the weddings is just like, it's a celebration of life. Like it's like your wedding moment, you'll never have like a. It's why I think it's such a what's a lifetime moment. Like if you could bottle up the energy at a wedding, especially like a really like I think our wedding's so beautiful because people have seen us journey. We got really deep friendships, relationships. Like yeah. I feel like we've tried to love on people the best we could. So like all the love somebody has for you than each other, it's all like in this one moment. Ugh. And it's just like the most beautiful the thing ever. ever. And it's like like it's once because it's like you could never recreate that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's why it's, it'll be forever forever etched in my mind uh i was i think that's kind of nearing to the end here i think yeah. we talked about everything like i gotta go i gotta go feed i know you gotta feed we might have to uh she might have to make an appearance at the end is there anything you, i want to talk to you last last to end it um off top of your head best best piece of advice that somebody's giving you No, I honestly haven't gotten like a lot of advice. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that just me? <laughs> you got uh, give me something like somebody told you something um, that shaped you into the woman. You're a good woman. Who okay. told you something to make you that? Um, I made it on my own. Honestly, no, you did not. I'm just up. kidding. Shut up. I don't know. I uh, y'all are gonna hate me for this, but. Probably just follow Jesus. That works. That really is like the only advice that I can give that is worth something, honestly. I I will say you're like a huge advice quotes person. For me, I think I just remember certain times in my life that were like pivotal. All right. I don't necessarily remember like advice, but I think the best advice I ever got was follow and trust Jesus. Because anytime I've done that, it's never led me astray. That's good. That's all I got for you. What's uh what's some some of the worst advice somebody's ever given you? Um to keep your guard up. Mm. Because anytime I've ever done that, it's like only made me like bitter or like emotionally unavailable or like not kind. And whenever you let your guard down and like allow people to like allow people in or like honestly allow people to hurt you right like it in the end will make you better yeah and you having a guard up is like only hindering you right in life that's really good because wow that's actually i ain't 
That was a, you say you don't like quote. That's a good quote. That's a good. That's a good little saying because Thanks. if you look at like love, I feel like in order to to in order to receive love or to experience love, you, it has you have to have the option to be hurt. Mm-hmm. There's no other way around it. You can't like experience love without the opportunity for somebody to hurt you. For sure. And, and honestly, most loving cases, you will get hurt. Like the thing you love, you're going for the person you love. There's gonna be some type of hurt in there. But it's kind of just par for the course more so than it's like a reason to say it's not love, you know? Mm-hmm. And to, that's really good. I like that. Um, Thanks. What does, look, my first one now, I prepped you for this a little bit. I don't know what you're going to say. I don't know either. But whatever your heart says. But okay. Everybody comes on here is going to answer this one question because I, I do believe the journey is, has was a near and dear phrase for me coming up. But I do feel like the reason I think it's resonating with me and some of the other people is because everybody has a journey of some sort. Like everybody, and it really helps you frame your experience. I just feel like it's just like, like even I'm talking about relationship, it's like everything, ups and downs, hard times, the, bad, the good times, it's like the journey. And it's been beautiful because we didn't give up and quit and kept going. So what does the journey mean to you? I feel like you kind of just stole my answer a little bit, but I would just say like the ebb and flow of life. Like you're going to, walk the narrow road sometimes and it's going to be hard and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be all of the emotions and so i would just say for me just like walking the narrow path and like not stopping and not quitting and feeling all the emotions and allowing yourself to just keep going it's beautiful Guys, I, I, I knew that question was going to be asked, and I did not think about what my answer was going to be. There's no wrong answer. There's really no wrong answer. I, I cannot wait to watch these and see what people say. I know. Because I, I really feel like fun. it's very, it's very like up for interpretation. Because it's like I think everybody has And a, for me, it's always been your thing. But your thing is the fact that it's not your thing. It's everybody's thing. Yeah, it's definitely my. I feel like it's mine. But I mean, it's, it's also like your brand. Yeah, but. but it's also everyone else's. Because like, I really do. I look at life like everybody has a journey. The sign was at our wedding, fun fact. I know, look, and it's come useful. We knew we were going to put it in our house somewhere, and here we are. It was on the DJ booth. But look, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, like, we talked about a lot, and, like, this is obviously it's like my wife. Uh, it's my first guest. It's a great first guest. It's like, it's, it's very, it's, this is perfect. First guest. It's just going to get better from here. Yeah, maybe not. Hey, maybe not. But but as far as episode. but as far as I do think as we keep going, like I tell I told him last week, it's like it's gonna continue to get better. So if you learn anything, well now I feel like we have to show Beckham. Oh, yeah. Wait, this might be perfect timing. Susan, bring Beckham in here. Mom, how did you know? Wait. Wait I how heard. How 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 how? how, how, how she look, how, how, show head. Show the back of her head. Like. Oh, die hungry yeah. girl. Call me. Oh. 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 Oh, my God. That can be good now. We're recording a podcast. <laughs> okay. Um, I missed you, my girl. All right. She's she's upset because she needs to eat, so we got to go. Yeah. Um, but here's our beautiful baby. I oh, know. She is beautiful. She's hungry. Look at what our love made. That's what we always Look say. Look at what our love made. All right, guys. Mackenzie can sing. She'll be playing, y'all. All right, I'm going to sign it off. Maybe next episode I'll sing y'all a song. Bye. <laughs> yeah, to wrap it up, hopefully um, you guys enjoyed that. And honestly, I enjoy these conversations just because even though it's my wife, we talk all the time. It's still cool to like, unpack the journey. It's really beautiful, our story. Um, but hopefully this is this platform really is for wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Hopefully this inspires you to become whoever you're supposed to be. Um, and... Thank you for tuning in to another episode and do all the things like subscribe, comment. And the biggest thing is I really, like I told you last year, I really want to build a community. And so if you got something that hit you from this video, please tell me, say something, because it might be for you, obviously, but it also could be for somebody else. And so be the brave one. Let's build this thing. I just hopefully we keep it growing, but I'm excited about the guests that are going to come on more conversations. Um, and until next time, I don't know, keep growing, keep progressing, keep evolving, keep becoming who you're supposed to be. Love y'all and see y'all next week.